There's no shadow Moses of a doubt that Hideo Kojima created one of the most iconic and intriguing worlds with the Metal Gear series. Snake, Foxhound, and the literal army of supporting characters helped shape this series into an epic AAA franchise that it is today. The stylized action coupled with its unique idea of stealthily sneaking around to achieve objectives was well ahead of its time. So it goes without saying that Metal Gear fans the world all over were veritably excited when the Metal Gear Collection Volume 1 was announced. The collection itself is home to Metal Gear 1 and Snake's Revenge which were originally on the NES, the PlayStation Platinum hit Metal Gear Solid, and both PlayStation 2 hits Sons of Liberty and Snake Eater. There's a lot in this collection, so let's take a look at the games, the extras, and most importantly the execution of this package. Has Konami succeeded in honouring the source material, or will Major Tom order a Fulton extraction evacuation? Let's Halo jump right in. Starting with Metal Gear 1 and Snake's Revenge, I feel like many gamers may be put off by these ones as they were limited by the technology of their time. For those who do persevere, you'll be treated to a classic top-down sneak-em-up that tells the story of Snake as he infiltrates the enemy facility while evading detection. The gameplay was quite advanced for its time, but can be quite basic and punishing these days, which may be off-putting for some. Personally, I found it quite difficult never having played it back in the day but I did persevere and I found both titles to be enjoyable. Metal Gear Solid Metal Gear Solid is my pick of the collection. Sure, it hasn't aged the best in terms of graphics as the collection opted to use the PS1 version of the game over PC so you can play it in all its original glory. Metal Gear Solid still entertains today with its story, sneaking mechanics and unique boss fights. Gameplay was revolutionary for its time with interesting concepts like running in puddles alerting the enemy to your presence, and the ability to detect the use of auto fire during the most infamous part of the late game. Close quarters combat and shooting mechanics meant that when detected you can try and stand your ground or try to disrupt the enemy long enough to escape. Metal Gear Solid also allows you to edit a fake memory card from the menu in the settings that will allow you to experience the Psycho Mantis fight in all its glory, something that was so cutting edge for its time. I was blown away when it happened back in the day. While unfortunately it won't have the same impact due to changes in technology, it's still a nice touch to add this version to Metal Gear Solid. The strong point of Metal Gear Solid is its unapologetic anti-nuclear stance, which is carefully layered into the narrative. Like all Metal Gear games, Kojima carefully weaves a story full of intricacies as well as twists and turns that make you want to see it through right until the end. Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty Controversial opinion, but Sons of Liberty is the weakest link out of the big three titles in this collection. Not because it's a bad game per se, but because you play the majority of the game as Raiden, a rookie soldier that takes a bit to get used to. It's quite an adjustment seeing the perspective of Raiden to that of a seasoned veteran like Snake. The gameplay itself is solid and has several quality of life improvements on the original Metal Gear Solid game as well as some intense real-to-life details about military options and operations. This attention to detail is what made Sons of Liberty a huge advance in tactical games and paved the way for what would become a focus of the series moving forward. Playing the game on Switch shows just how good it was for its time because it still holds up to this day. It should be noted that this version of Sons of Liberty runs at 30 frames a second, a baffling step back as it's native at 60 frames per second on the PlayStation 2. As the Switch is more than powerful enough to run at this frame rate, I have no idea why it doesn't. While it doesn't really affect the gameplay, I just don't know why it's outperformed by the original release, which came out 22 years ago. Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater Hands down the most polished and in-depth title of the collection, Snake Eater takes us back in time before the previous entries to tell an amazing story about Foxhound and how pretty much everything came to be. 
It's set in the 60s and 70s and has a Connery-era Bond vibe with slick cutscenes, compelling characters, and many amazing mechanics to keep you engrossed throughout the adventure. It has stellar sound design, immersive environments, and some really unique boss fights, and ways around them. These clever loopholes allow seasoned veterans of the series to power through the game and also help warrant a second playthrough for the newbies. Snake Eater also sees the implementation of a camouflage system, allowing you to combine different patterned uniforms and face paint to make sneaking through the jungle easier, as well as refined shooting mechanics should things escalate, or if you're about it stealth like me. There are also survival elements like having to source food and manage stamina that add new elements to the game. Snake Eater also seems to be locked at a lower frame rate for some reason, but it doesn't stop it from being one of the most memorable titles in the entire franchise, as well as the most accessible to newcomers. What order should you play them in? Chronologically speaking, the timeline unfolds by playing Snake Eater first, Metal Gear 1 and Snake's Revenge, then Metal Gear Solid, and then Sons of Liberty. But with that being said, newcomers to the series will find it hard to go back to the NES and PlayStation versions of the game due to the evolution of gameplay and quality of life changes. It may sound controversial, but I would play them in order of release as there's games that will no doubt be featured in the second collection, like Peace Walker, my personal favourite, and The Phantom Pain that will slot in between these titles. The Collection Package the main glaring issue in this collection is that it's haphazardly slapped into a package with minimal effort and afterthought. One would dare say that the 3DS port of Snake Eater saw more love and attention than what this iconic collection so deserves. While I'm not a purist in any form and simply love to play video games and write about them, the fact that the Switch cartridge contains just the NES games and some of the bonus content only coupled with the performance of Sons of Liberty and Snake Eater somehow running worse than their original counterparts, despite being on more powerful hardware, is a shame. Each game does come with a master book that is full of artworks and facts, as well as a script for each game. There's also a digital soundtrack that covers some of the tracks of each game. And there are two graphic novels that play out like a video covering Metal Gear Solid and Sons of Liberty. It's a nice touch and fans will certainly enjoy these added bonuses, which you do have to download separately again, but thankfully for free. Another complaint I have, which may sound like a minor gripe at this stage, is that the collection adds five icons to the home screen instead of just being in one launcher, despite all these games actually having a specific launcher when you load them. The complaint doesn't affect the final outcome of this review, although I really would have loved for all content and games to be under one package. Despite its performance shortfalls on the Nintendo Switch, there's so much fun to be had with this collection. While the bonuses are somewhat disappointing, even to a more casual fan of the series, the games themselves are certainly worth your time. Some weirdly sexualized content and remarks within may have aged poorly and Konami does acknowledge that, but the games and mechanics themselves still hold up to this day. I would recommend gamers dive in to enjoy the Metal Gear games for what they are, often stylish, sometimes over the top, and always a classic. I award this collection an 80 out of 100. Snake, what happened? Snake!